Hello and thank you for joining us today. On this quick video, we'll be going over a demo of Shipa, a cloud native application management framework. But before going over the demo, it is good to have an understanding of Shipa's cloud native application management framework that makes it all possible, helping us understand how everything comes together. If we look from the lenses of the platform engineering team or a platform operator, our goal is to define and create frameworks. And these frameworks, they need to be completely abstracted from Kubernetes or the clusters that we're running underneath. And when defining these frameworks, we specify things such as how much memory and CPU our applications deployed using this framework can actually consume, what type of security scans should be run, and if any exceptions we want to open, if any, which teams can leverage this framework when deploying their applications, volumes, all the way down to the network configuration, such as policies or zero trust capabilities. And as we see in the example here, it is completely abstracted away from the specific cluster. We're creating an abstraction layer as a framework. Once created, we can then attach this framework to a cluster. In this case, in the example, we're mentioning GKE. But reality is, a single framework is not enough to address the requirements of the different applications we might have. So we can create different frameworks with different specifications, such as different teams that are allowed to deploy using them, different network policies, different security settings. And we can use these frameworks sometimes to separate environments, such as development, QA and production, or we can use it to isolate different business units within the organizations, different regions, and so on and so forth. And once these different frameworks are created, we can then apply them to different clusters, such as EKS in this example. And what happens is, once these frameworks are attached to your clusters, they automatically start giving you functionalities back and to the applications that are then deployed through them, such as the RBAC, routing, monitoring, integrated security, multi-cluster, and so on and so forth. And the great part about them is that once deployed, the applications that are deployed through these frameworks, they automatically have access to your existing infrastructure, such as Datadog, New Relic, Jenkins, your CI CD pipelines, your incident management tools, and others. So we as a platform engineering team, we don't need to be concerned about setting these up individually for each application when deployed. From an application developer perspective, our developers, they can keep using the same source code repository management, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, or others. And they can also keep using the same CI platforms that they were using before. But a few things happen here and make it different. As a platform engineering team, it fixes our last mile deployment. So instead of creating a bunch of Helm charts, custom scripts, Terraform scripts, and others to be able to deploy our applications from our CI CD pipeline into the different Kubernetes clusters that we have. We now connect the CI pipeline directly to these frameworks that we as a platform engineering team defined before. Not only that, not only that it removes your custom scripts, Helm charts, and Terraform scripts, but it also completely removes the need of your developer to learn, manage, create, objects for your Kubernetes clusters. So when deploying their applications, they are focused solely on the application code rather than on creating a bunch of Kubernetes objects. And what happens is once they push their code to their source code repository, CI builds, tests, and delivers to the framework, these frameworks are then now responsible for automatically creating the application objects and everything that is required within that cluster for your application to run. So now we allow our developers to focus on their applications rather than on a bunch of objects. It doesn't change the development workflow and it embeds security in the process. So we as a platform engineering team, we keep control over what's being deployed and it gives them better visibility and observability. Now, not only from a bunch of objects perspective, but also from an application visibility perspective. So enough slides from now, let's go over them. So in front of us, we have Shipa's dashboard. And Shipa can be operated both from the dashboard as well as from the Shipa CLI. When we look at the dashboard, we can see some information about the geographic distribution of our applications. So 
information about the node distribution across the different clusters and cloud providers that we may have, as well as some insight about the deployments that are happening from across the different frameworks, pools, or teams, some information about security, applications, and recent events. The base of Shipa is centered around the pools or the frameworks that we mentioned before. These frameworks, they can be created directly from the CLI using the format that we have shown in the slides, as well as directly from your dashboard, where you can enter information such as namespace, application quota, security settings, network policies, and others. Once these frameworks are created, we can then attach our clusters to the different frameworks that we created or the pools that we created. And when, once we go into one of them, we can see some information such as active scans, the number of applications that can be deployed, routing, security, and others, as, as well as we start getting some information about the nodes and clusters that are attached to that pool, such as the metadata of the different nodes and clusters, units of the applications that are deployed within that specific node, and some node-related metrics. Great. So we, as a platform engineering team, we created the pools or the framework as mentioned before. We have attached clusters to it and we have given access to our developers to Shipa. So our developers can now start deploying their applications. Applications can be created and deployed directly from your CI pipeline. As well as your CI pipeline, you can create pools and attach clusters so you can completely manage the lifecycle of Shipa and your applications directly from CI. You can also do that using Shipa's CLI, which is what we're going to use in this demo to make things easier to understand. So let's say I'm a developer now and I want to deploy my simple Golang application and I have been given access to Shipa. I can just go to Shipa's CLI and say Shipa app create app one demo. I would say it's a Golang application. The team that it's going to own this application is going to be admin or my different teams that I may have access to. And the pool where I want to deploy my application or the framework that I want to use when deploying this application. If we go back here, we have a few different options. We can maybe use GKE CL1 pool or framework that is actually attached to a GKE cluster. We also have clusters across AKS and you can attach clusters such as EKS, Oracle Kubernetes Engine, IBM, and so on. But for this example, we're going to deploy using a framework that is attached to GKE. So we're going to say GKE CL1, which is the name of our pool. Great. The application is created. If we go into applications, we see our app one demo here. It is attached to this pool. Here's the plan and plans dictate how much memory and CPU my application can actually consume. And the status is actually idle because I haven't deployed anything. So when I go back to my CLI, I can actually see my simple application in here. I have a Golang application, very simple, that basically prints Shiba apps once it's deployed. You can see that I have no Kubernetes objects or Kubernetes related YAML files whatsoever. I have a Shiba YAML file in here, which is an optional, which is actually an optional file. And in my case, it's just running a hook during the build, which again, I can delete that file, it's definitely not necessary. Shiba YAML files are basically used for running hooks as well as performing health checks of the applications when they're deployed or restarted. But again, these are optional. Great, so now I have my sample application and I'm gonna deploy it. So Shipa app deploy the app one demo and I'm gonna deploy the files that are local to my uh, comment line. You can see that me as a developer, I haven't created anything about Kubernetes. I actually don't know if it's running GKE or AKS or I don't know if it's running Kubernetes at all because I'm just focused on deploying my code at this point. And the deployment that I'm making right now, it can be done directly from your CI pipeline. It doesn't need to be done from your terminal. I'm just using the terminal here to make things easier for this demo. Great. So while Sheep is deploying the application, let's go through and look at an application that we have deployed before. If we use the map of one of our applications, 
we can see in detail what Chipa has actually created for us. We can see our application code that we deployed as a developer. And to the right of it, we can see all the objects that Chipa actually created automatically. And we can see the relation of these objects to my application. So I have now an application view, but I understand exactly how everything is running on the background. So I can quickly troubleshoot and identify issues if I need to. I can, I can see things such as the unit information and the status, the deployment version of my image. I can see my application file dependencies as well as service, secrets, pods, and status, all the way down to hooks that my application may be using when it's actually being deployed or restarted, as well as comment lines for my application that are actually being used when my application is restarted. Once we go inside one of the applications that we have running, we can see some information about, such as the plan, again, how much memory and CPU my applications can consume, C names, which I can add more directly from here on HTTP and HTTPS, which has direct relations and integration into Let's Encrypt. So it generates the certificates automatically. You can also import your certificates, your, uh, your own certificates if you'd like. Environment variables, which we can define as well. And we can start seeing some transactions for our uh, application. So we can get some insights directly from Shiba about our application, how it's performing, requests per second, and we can quickly identify if there, there's any problem with latency or pages not being available for our application and so on and so forth. We can see the resources that the containers related to our applications are actually consuming. We can see the units of our applications. So if our application starts to scale, we can actually see directly here and the status of each unit. We can see a life cycle of our application. So we can see exactly what happened when the application was created, when deployments happen, when the application actually scaled up or down, and we can see what triggered that event or who triggered that event, when that happened and how long it took and the outcome of it, as well as the different logs attached to these events. We can do rollbacks directly from here. So if you have deployed multiple versions of your application, but then later on you found out that maybe version two was the right one or best one, you can deploy and you can roll back directly from here. When you're deploying applications, you can also use things such as Canary uh, directly from the CLI as well as using your CI and it removes completely away the need of your developer actually creating a bunch of uh, YAML scripts. You can see security scans that are being executed for your application. Chipa executes those scans not only at deployment time but also post deployment. And if there are any vulnerabilities found, Chip is going to emit an alert directly from here so you can quickly identify and mitigate. Once deployed, your application can be integrated into different incident management tools such as PagerDuty or VictorOps or others. So you're on top of everything that is happening to your application and you don't need to configure on Kubernetes that. Last but not least, you have network policies. So you can define network policies for your applications directly here for both ingress and egress. And we can see that our application finished deployment. If we go back into our app one demo, now we see it's running. We can see the objects that are related to my application. If we go inside, we see the endpoint that Shipa automatically created. And Chipo supports both traffic as, as the routing, as well as Istio and Envoy. If we go inside, we can see Shipa apps, just like our code. So again, me as a developer, I don't know anything about Kubernetes and I don't need to know. I'm just concerned about my application. And from here, the same thing. I can identify transactions, resources, security, network policies, so on and so forth. And all the metrics that we have here, they can be exported to Prometheus. They, some of them, they are actually leveraging Prometheus, as well as they can be exported to other third parties monitoring apps, such as Datadog and New Relic. Me as a developer, I can have access to services or external services, such as database and queuing. And the platform engineering team, they can create and define some here, such as, let's say, Postgres, where they can enter the name, the pool where they want to make that service available, the teams that can have access to this, uh, this service, the host, the port, and so on. 
Here in this example, I have a, a PostgreSQL data service actually from Google Cloud, which I have uh, put connected to Shipa. And then developers, they can come directly here. They can create the instances within that database themselves. If we as a platform engineering team, we allow them to. And once they create the instances, they can bind these instances to their applications. Here we can see that some of the applications are already bound to the service, such as Django blog. And if we go back here, we can see our Django blog app. And we can see that we have the service actually bound to this application. Once the service is bound to that application, Shipa populates the environment variables and the secrets that are required for your developers. So they can use and abstract that directly from their code. They don't need to be concerned about how to set this up from an application perspective and Kubernetes perspective. And last but not least, you have access to volumes. So if your cluster is connected to different volume and storage providers through the CSI, you can actually connect them directly from Shipa and your developers, if you allow them to, they can also create volumes directly here and attach these volumes directly to their applications. And everything that we manage as a platform engineering team, we're managing completely abstracted away. We're defining rules and metrics that we want, and we can apply these rules through the frameworks or pools that we call to the different clusters that we might have, such as on-premises, GKE, AKS, and others. And from a developer perspective, they are deploying and managing the entire life cycle of their applications without creating a single Kubernetes file or without even knowing what Kubernetes cluster is being used, version, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, we're implementing security controls and guardrails around the application deployment and management space. We're integrating into our existing software stacks such as CI, CD, monitoring, and others. And we're allowing our developers to deploy applications faster and manage their applications a lot easier than before. I hope this was insightful. Thank you for watching.